Welcome into the I-80 Boys College Football Show. We got a little Michigan versus Illinois preview for you. Chris, I'm going to start off by taking Michigan here. Look, Michigan has uh, done about what we thought they would do this season, I feel like, right? Nobody was expecting them to go undefeated, win another national championship coming into this year. But we knew that the offense would take some regressions. We knew the defense would still be good. Uh, and, and it just, to me, when I look at Michigan and I look at how they kind of play into this game, I got to start with the quarterback position. Uh, quarterback wise, uh, there looks like they're leaning towards Jack Tuttle, a guy that's a seventh year uh, senior who's been around forever. Uh, but Davis Warren, you know, that was the guy we talk about all the time. He was the guy that won the job coming out of camp. So that literally means, I mean, they had an open quarterback competition coming out of this camp, right? Davis Warren was a guy that they said, hey, this is the best guy that we feel like right now gives us the best chance to win. He has done nothing but put up uh, two touchdowns and six interceptions. Turned the ball over. Uh, to me, probably the best thrower of the football they have. He's just very turnover prone. Then you look at Alex Orgy. He's a great athlete back there. Cannot throw the football to save his life. Uh, struggles to have 100 yards passing in any game he plays. Uh, I would even say 50 to 75 yards passing in any game he ever plays. So that's pretty tough there. Jack Tuttle, a guy that came in and played a half last week against, uh, or you know, two weeks ago against Washington, uh, had two turnovers in the second half of that game. Now, to me, whoever you want to trot back out there, whether you say it's the offensive line because we had all those guys graduate, go off to the NFL, you know, whether you want to say the running game hasn't been as good as it was last year, whatever you want to say, doesn't matter. You got to find somebody back there to throw the football, right? Uh, their leading receiver right now is their tight end Loveland, which is uh, you know guys guys a, a great player. Don't get me wrong, he's a great player, but they got to figure something out back there in that passing game because obviously what they're doing offensively. Chris, the last time they've scored thirty, they've only scored thirty points one time this year, and it was thirty points exactly to Fresno State in the first game of the year. They've regressed ever since then. They have no confidence. We talk about it week in week out here. Kalel Mullins is their uh, number one running back this year over Donovan Edwards. This guy was a converted linebacker, and, I mean, he's looked leaps and bounds better than Donovan Edwards this year. Six touchdowns, almost 600 yards on the ground. On the flip side of this, we're going to kind of talk about where the matchup for this game really comes down to, and that's Michigan on defense. I think Michigan on defense, I mean, they've done pretty well this year. I mean, they've kept themselves in just about every single game they've played, uh, you know, excluding the Texas game. But, again, you know, Texas has one of the best offenses in the country, so don't feel too bad about that. You know, we know Illinois can put up some points. And to me, going into this game, I actually have a very strong feeling. Illinois, you know, not only do they have the confidence coming into this, they just look like a better team. And and I actually know they know who their quarterback is, and I know who a couple of their wide receivers are that we're going to hear. So I'm not trying to shit on Michigan, uh, but at the same time, I just – to me, whenever you're cycling through quarterbacks every week, it's not a good thing. You're putting your defense in a worse position than what they should be. And I, offensively, Michigan has to find an identity. We'll talk about you know, why I think Sharon Moore is the scapegoat of this program in another video. Uh, that's a whole topic we could del delve in and talk to for about two hours. But, yeah, it's just not looking good on the road here against Illinois. Chris, I want to hear about the fighting Illini. Yeah, um, coming into this game, they're actually underdogs here. Both teams rated just inside the top 25, but uh, I'll break down some stats here for Illinois. You know, they're 5-1 and one this year. The only loss was to Penn State, which is kind of ironic because I call them, you know, Penn State's little brother. They're very similar um, just as far as the way they play football. But Illinois is averaging 31 points per game. That's 50th in the nation. They're only 76 in total offense, um, 87th in rushing offense, which is a little surprising for a Brett Bielema-led team. Um, and they're 58th in the passing in the passing game. So my guy, Luke Altmaier, we talk about him quite a bit over here. Um, he's had a, a pretty damn good season so far. He really has. He's looked really good compared to last year. Um, he's got well over 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns, Christian, just one interception on the year. So he's been protecting the ball. Um, as far as the run game goes, which they've struggled, like I mentioned a little bit this year, um, Caden Fegan, he's their top back, you know, over 300 yards, three touchdowns on the on the season. But They've also played some really good defenses, though, this year that could stop the run. Nebraska being one of them, obviously, in Penn State. So um, Michigan's got a pretty decent defense as well, but they're going to have to be able to, to keep them honest and run the football a little bit in this game. Um, at wide receiver, you you mentioned it. They got two studs. They got, you know, Pat Bryant and Zach uh, Franklin, uh, especially Pat Bryant, dude. This guy's only got, like, I mean, 27 catches on the year, but he's got seven touchdowns. So he is a red zone threat uh, every time he's down in that uh, red zone. So. 
Um, like I said, Illinois overall, though, you look at the stats offensively, they're good, but not great. But, um, you know, like I said, this Michigan defense is going to be pretty good. This will be an interesting matchup here. Um, Michigan, I will say one thing, they are good at Christian is stopping the run. They're third in the country, um, you know, so they only give up like 78 yards per game on the ground. So that'll be an interesting matchup there. Uh, defense with Illinois, um, you know, they're, they're giving up 20 points per game on the year, which is 32nd. 59th in total defense, 77th against the run, and 43rd against the pass. Now, I want to talk about this Purdue game a little bit um, before I get in my score prediction here last week. I did get to watch a ton of that game. I was looking at the score. Illinois was way up at halftime. Illinois gave up 40 points in the second half to a Purdue team, which I think is just absolute hot garbage. Uh, that game ended up going in overtime. Illinois obviously won it, I think, like 50 to 49, which is crazy. A track meet type of game in the Big Ten. You don't see that a lot. Uh, but I'm a little worried about the defense for Illinois there. Hopefully they get their shit together this week because, like I said, not that anybody's real, you know, really scared of Michigan's offense by any means, especially the passing attack that you alluded to. But uh, I do think this game is going to be relatively low scoring. I think it'll be ball control. Um, one thing with Illinois, we talked about it even in the Nebraska matchup a couple weeks ago. They don't beat themselves. I mean, they're they're, they're one of the least penalized teams in the country. Um, they don't turn it over a ton. Uh, and I like Illinois in this game, Christian. I got Michigan 20, Illinois 23. Yeah, very similar there, Chris. I've got Michigan 17, Illinois 24. 